Good morning. I'm Russ Mitchell and welcome to 7 Minutes. Our guest today is Cleveland sports royalty. So much so that even his official title says so. Campy Russell's official title with the Cleveland Cavaliers is Cavaliers legend <laughs> and director of alumni affairs. He joins us now for seven minutes. Campy, it's great to see you. Thanks Russ, for having us here. My pleasure. I've been looking forward to doing this. Well, thank you. Just yes. off the floor of the queue. <laughs> yes. Also, of course, you're a broadcaster for the Cavs pre and post game shows. Looks like you have a lot of fun doing those. You know something, Russ, uh, when you have a great product, you know, you tend to have uh, a lot of fun. And Jeff Phelps and I, as well as the rest of the Fox team, uh, we have a great time uh, because we know what we're delivering to our fans, and our fans have uh, accepted us very, very well. And I'm just looking forward to us continuing on down the road, <laughs> being a very good basketball team. Well, I've often wanted to ask someone of your stature. You're obviously so close to the team. You're seeing everything. Are there ever those times when you say to yourself, you know, I could get out there and do that again? <laughs> Russ, you know something? Never. Never? Uh, okay. No, never. And, yeah. and the reason why I say that is, and I tell people this all the time, Russ, is once you become 50, there's nothing good can happen to you <laughs> playing basketball. <laughs> so, you know, either tearing an Achilles or a knee yeah. or your back, all those issues. So I, I have gotten over that some time ago. And as I tell people, when I, the day I became 50, I never, I, I, I put basketball down and have never picked it back up. Since. Interesting. Do you miss anything about playing? I still miss, you know, the fact of the camaraderie, uh -huh. you know, particularly with the teammates that I've had, whether it was here in Cleveland or in New York. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that you miss. Sure. I, I think the thing that helped me a lot understand this is that, you know, I, I kind of set some goals early in my life about playing basketball and how long I wanted to play. And then, as we all, we want to play a little longer, but once that light went off, I just said, hey, it's time for me to move on to my next endeavor. This whole legend thing is nothing new to you. Legend in high school, at Pontiac <laughs> High School in yeah. Michigan, University of Michigan, of course, here with the Cavs. Is there a defining moment in your career? I can think of a couple here. Hmm. In your mind, is there one defining moment for you? <sighs> it's, it's kind of hard to say, but I, I, I would say, one, um, being an all-star uh, back in 1979, I think that was the the, to let me know, even though I always felt like I was that kind of player that could reach that pinnacle, uh, but the only, uh, that was definitely it. And then the second thing was just having the opportunity to play with a bunch of good guys uh, that was a part of that miracle team yeah. uh, back in 1975, 76 season and beyond. And the great relationships that I have picked up over those years, I think those are the things that uh, I look at it. I don't look at it so much in basketball anymore, right. but I just look at it in terms of the relationship that I have uh, garnered over those years. You mentioned the miracle. You cannot mention the name Campy Russell in <laughs> Cleveland, and people don't talk about the miracle of Richfield. Yes. 1976, you guys were the Rocky Balboas, who the <laughs> then Washington Bullets, Apollo yes. Creed. You pulled it out, the uh, Eastman Conference semifinals. What do you remember? What, what's your most fond memory of the, that? Bi the biggest memory about that is, you know, uh, a lot of people look at it as a, a miracle, mm -hmm. but I always looked at it as I looked around the room and saw the guys that we were going to war with. And to me, I was like, you know something? We're supposed to beat these guys, <laughs> you know, really. And we're supposed to beat sure, them because, right. you, look, you know, look at how we play. You look at the two teams we had, and you had the starters, and you had this bench. And they could not, I mean, the, the Bullets at that time could not handle the starters, and then they couldn't handle the second team, which was Nate Thurman, myself, Austin Carr, and Footsie Walker. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't handle that because it was such a great change of pace that they didn't know what to do with that. So to me, I didn't look at it as a miracle. I just looked at it as that was something that was meant to be because you had 12 guys that had came together and wanted to make it happen, even though we were playing against a bunch of Hall of Famers and Wes Unsell, right. Dave Bing, uh, Elvin <laughs> Hayes. Uh, Phil Chenier was not, is not retired yet. I mean, not a uh, Hall of Famer, but they had an outstanding basketball team. But our commitment to each other and the way we wanted to play that game the right way, yeah. that, we felt like that was it. And the rest was history. Absolutely. Let's talk about today in this yeah. team. Mm -hmm. What is gonna, what's it going to take for this team to go all the way this year? And by, go, by all the way, I mean beating the Warriors <laughs> in June. How do you just say the Warriors? You know, I mean, just a, you know, it came to mind. It's hard, it's hard for <laughs> right. me to, to look at it in that way, Russ, in terms of identifying a particular team. Because one thing about the NBA, all these teams in this league is capable of beating you. Yes, the Warriors are who they are, you know, but, but I don't look at it that way. I just look at it as can we get past 
the Eastern Conference, which has some very good basketball teams mm -hmm. in it, the, the Toronto Raptors, the Celtics. Uh, well, well, let me ask you know. this way. What's it going to take for us to go all the way, whoever we're facing <laughs> well, down the road? I, I, I think the best thing, that, the, the way to, to, to look at that, Russ, is, again, can we continue to get better every day? And then can we come together as a team that no matter what comes before us, we're going to be able to handle that and then move forward. So I, I just think that it's all going to be about team. Can they compete at a high level every single night? Can they get it done defensively every single night? And can they get it done offensively? And I believe we have the tools to do that, Russ, without question. The tools are here. I'm but now it's just up to those guys. I'm going to throw out some names to you. Give okay. me a sentence, if okay. you would, on mm -hmm. each one. LeBron James. One of the best players on the planet. Uh, still getting it done at a high level even at this point. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, just talent. So much talent. Uh, can do anything he wants to do on the floor. Uh, just a phenomenal player. Uh, that's how I view him. Steph Curry. Steph Curry, just an outstanding uh, special player uh, that has brought back a lost art in basketball, and that is the ability to shoot the ball. Going kind of off that now. Mm -hmm. Can Steph Curry be stopped? <laughs> 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 great one. That, that was great, Russ. <laughs> but, but let me tell you something about that. You know, we, we all talk about, you know, why don't somebody knock him down or hit him in the head or do all this? You know, the game has changed so much, and you cannot do that. And because of that, I think we all have to recognize that that young man is a special talent, just gotcha. like a lot of the other guys in our league. They're special talents, and he can get it done in a lot of ways. And the thing, again, I like about him is that he has brought back the, shoot, the, the art of shooting the ball. You know, now kids are looking at shooting the ball. Not so much the three-point shot, but being able to shoot the ball. I've got about 30 seconds left. Very quickly, you're mm -hmm. director of alumni relations. Yes. When you talk to former players, what do they tell you about their time with the Cavs and what was so special about it? Well, I, I think the thing that most people like about what's going on with this team is the fact that we have put together a program such as our Legends program to reach out mm -hmm. to the former players because I think you find out sometimes by going through the league, that a lot of guys are not embraced by their, by their franchise. And so we, as the Cavaliers, and Dan Gilbert and his, and his guys have done a great job of putting this in, plan, in, in place and allowing us to reach out to those guys and let them know they are Cavaliers definitely for life. All right, Campy Russell, Cleveland legend. Thank you. Cavaliers legend <laughs> and director of alumni affairs. Thank you very Cavaliers. much. Appreciate you so much. So we, don't, we can't expect you to go out there and play anytime soon. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm over 50. All right. So like I said, <laughs> nothing good can happen. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. And that is all for this week. I will see you Monday at 6 on the news and back here next week for seven minutes. Have a great weekend. To watch this segment again or see previous editions of 7 Minutes with Russ Mitchell, please go to WKYC.com.